All right, what we're working on now is we're working on solving systems using substitution. And so remember, a one solution was when we learned how to do it earlier is when they crossed. And what we found is we would find an x and y value. So that's the same here. Uh, a no solution is when they don't cross. And a situation like that is when you have variables on both sides that will cross off. But then you're left with a false statement. 2 does not equal 3, so it's no solution. And then an infinite solution is when you have variables that cross off. But when they cross off, you're left with a true statement where 3 equals 3. And so for these two here, no solution and infinite solutions, the variables are gone. You take care of something and they're gone. And so if it's true, it's all reals. If it's false, it is no solution. Okay, so here's the steps that we need to follow to solve using substitution. Substitution is going to be a little awkward at first, but then after you do a couple, you'll understand what we're doing. All right, so the first thing you do is you solve for a variable with no coefficient. So what that means is I want a problem to either be an x equals something, or a y equals something. Those are the ones that I'm going to focus on. And then I'm going to plug it into the other equation, simplify and solve, and then plug that back in. And so once I do a couple, you'll understand. So if you notice x is by itself, so I'm going to circle that. I circle for two reasons. I circle because it makes the first step easier to do, and then I circle for one of the last steps. So this is x, so I'm going to plug it in here. So it's going to be 2 parentheses, minus 3y equals 0, and I got that from right here. Now, what I'm plugging in is the 13 minus 5y. A good place for you to check now is when you plug it in, do you have the same variable? And I have two y's. If you ever have an x and a y, then that means you plugged it in the wrong spot, so you need to try and fix that. So that's the hardest step, figuring out what you're going to plug in and where you're going to plug it in. Now we just get to do some algebra. So 2 times 13 is 26, 2 times 5 is 10, and since it's a negative, I bring it down. I'm going to combine my terms, so I get 26 minus 13y is 0. I'm going to move my 26, so negative 13y is negative 26, and I'm going to divide by negative 13, so I get y is 2. Now this is the second place that I have a, a circle for. It's because I'm going to draw my arrow, and it tells me where to plug it in. So it's going to be 13 minus 5 times y, which we found out was 2. So 13 minus 10, which is 3. And so my x value is 3, and my y value is 2. Okay, so let's try the next one. Uh, change colors. So this time, I don't have an x equals like I had here. I had y equals, so that's what I'm going to circle. And because it's y, I'm going to plug it in for y. So I'm going to write negative 3x plus 3, and instead of y, I'm going to write the parentheses equals 4. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to put x plus 3. And so now I bring down the negative 3x, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So I get 3x plus 9. Uh, I can combine my terms, a negative 3x and a positive 3x. Well, those are gone. So I get 9 equals 4. So looking back up above, when variables are gone, it's either a no solution or infinite. And because this is a false statement, this is a no solution. There's no number that I could plug in that will work for this. Okay, so you have two down here that I'd like you to try on your own. So go ahead and write them out and see what you can do. Okay, so for the first one, hopefully you circled this, the y equals, and so now I'm plugging that in for y. So it's negative 2x minus 3 times that parentheses equals negative 7, and the thing going in the parentheses is 6x minus 11. So now I need to do some math and distribute, so I bring down my negative 2x. Negative 3 times 6x is negative 18x, and negative 3 times negative 11 is a positive 33. 
I combine my terms and I get negative 20x plus 33 is negative 7. I'm going to minus 33 on both sides. So I get negative 20x is equal to negative 40. And then I divide by negative 20, which gives me an answer of 2. Now remember from here, this is why I circle. I also circle so I know where to plug it in. So it's going to be 6 times 2 minus 11, which is 12 minus 11, which is 1. So now we just have to know which goes where, and x comes first, and then y. So x is 2, and then this answer was y. And so that's my answer. Okay. All right, last one. Let's switch colors one more time. Okay, this one's a little different. There's nothing alone. But if you notice this one, I can pretty easily solve for y. And all I have to do is divide by 2. So this tells me y is 6. So I just found my second answer. But what I have to do now is plug it into the other equation. And so it'll be negative 3x plus 6 times y equals 12. And we had just found out that y was 6. So I get negative 3x plus 36 is equal to 12. I'm going to minus 36 on both sides. So I get negative 3x is equal to negative 24. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And so I get x is 8. And so sometimes there's more algebra involved in the first step. But then, like over here, there was a lot more to do. But over on the problem number 4, it was more algebra at the end. Okay, so remember the key is you want to start off by finding something that isn't x equals or y equals. Once you do that, you circle it and you plug it in, and then you do the algebra. Once you find an answer, you go and plug it back in for what was circled. All right.